Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin, K7SW. Today I'm going to be showing you an alternate way to charge up your lithium battery while you're out camping. In this video I'm going to show you my DC to DC charge controller that's going to charge up my lithium batteries that I use for operating portable. And because a lithium battery requires a special kind of charging, like a two-stage charging capability, you just can't hook up 12 volts to it and, and let it go. There are a couple ways of charging your lithium batteries. And that's to use a solar panel, an electric battery charger, or something else. So here's the components, the parameters of the test that we're going to be running today. I'm using my eco-worthy 20 amp hour lithium battery, thanks to KB9 VBR for that recommendation of this battery. So far, all the use that I've had with it so far has been exceeding my expectations. The charge discharge rate maximum capability of this battery is 25 to 30 amps. I'll be using a 25 amp fuse in all the different link connections so in case there's a problem it's going to stop it with 25 amps. I'm using three ways of measuring current going into this battery. I'm using the non-precision Kiwitz clamp meter. That's going to be hooked onto the positive lead going into the battery. At the battery. I'm also going to be using the PowerWorks Precision Meter. That's going to be coming right out of the Renogy Charge Controller, the battery side of that device. And then lastly, I'm going to be using the app on my phone for my Victron Solar Charge Controller that's in my camper, providing solar power for the house batteries that are in my trailer. Now the app that I'm using on my phone is going to show me the power produced from the solar panels, how many amps are being put as output from my camper that's going to go into the Renogy. And in order to show you the clamp meter reading, I'm going to put the meter facing out towards us. It's going to show a negative number, but really that's how many amps are going into the battery. If I were to switch that meter around, it would show the proper amperage going into the battery. In my camper, I've wired in line pretty close to where the uh, connection is that kills all the power for the camper. I put in a 100 amp breaker. On the output side of this breaker are Anderson power poles, and that's so I can hook up any radio equipment, solar panels, or something else. Now I'm going to use this access point to the power system in my RV by using this 100 amp breaker. If there's any problem, all I have to do is trip that breaker and we'll kill the power to the rest of the chain. Okay, so that's the setup for this test. I've drained completely the 20 amp hour battery. I hooked up an inverter to it and ran just a standard fan so I could run that battery to the end. The fan drew between four and five amps on full blast. Of course, the BMS shuts off when you reach the minimum voltage. So let's talk a little bit about the charger that I'm using. This is a Renogy 30 amp DC to DC charger with an MPPT charge controller. I initially purchased this charger so that I could add truck charging from my pickup truck to charge the RV. But once I realize I'm going to have to add all kinds of crazy thick cable to go from my alternator in the pickup back to here, it just isn't worth it. So I repurposed this, and it's actually getting way more use than it did before. This is a 30 amp controller, and has the capability of a temperature sensor, a voltage sensor, and even a Bluetooth adapter that you can use to monitor it. I have all those accessories, but I really don't have a need for that because of how it operates. The charger itself has the capability to do multiple chemistries. It can do lead acid batteries, AGM, and of course, lithium. There's even a custom mode where you can set your own battery parameters for the kind of battery that you have. The power input sources for this controller. We've got an external source, which is meant for an alternator that provides 13.8 volts consistently. That'll trigger the charge cycle on that part of the device. Now, if you have solar panels, That'll also work in conjunction. Both sources can work at the same time. This thing will handle 400 watts, a maximum of 30 amps. Now it's actually more realistic for me to take a 100 watt solar panel with me out somewhere and do some portable activating because you can put a, a 100 watt solar panel out so easily. The problem with a 100 watt solar panel is you're only going to get 6 amps on a good day. And while that is good, that's not enough for me. If I'm operating late, let's say doing a parks on the air late shift and I need some more charging, I can hook this up to my camper the next morning. That thing's gonna be producing a lot of power right out of the gate. And now I've got 15 amps at least to fill up my battery. By adding these three charge meters, whether I'm monitoring on the cell phone or whether I'm watching the PowerWorks precision meter or we're looking at just the power clamp meter, that's giving me a pretty good idea of the consistency of the charge going in there, so I feel pretty good about the reliability. 
For lithium batteries to be charged, they need something to wake up the BMS and to keep it going. And that's usually a two-stage process in the charger. And that's why I went with this device, because it has that capability for lithium batteries. So let's get this thing charging. The first thing I'm going to do is trip that breaker or reset the breaker so that the power is going to go through this circuit. I've got 15 amps, and that's going to range between 17 amps down to 8 amps as the cycles continue. I'm going to record this for a while so you can see the peaks and the valleys. You can see as the amperage is kicking on full tilt, and then when it reaches a certain point and the BMS pushes back, the amperage drops down. Now as the battery fills up and the resistance pushes back against the charger, you'll see the voltage start to increase. So when the battery is fully charged, you're going to see 14.2 volts at the end. But until then, it's just going to continue to fill that battery. For a safety tip, I really think it's a great idea to be around or be near your lithium batteries while you're charging them. In case something were to go wrong, you're going to be there to fix that problem or put out that fire. Now what's nice on this Renogy charger is it does have a blinking light showing the indicator for the alternator being on and the battery indicator which when it's charging is yellow and, and maybe flashing. And so far my experience is when the battery is fully charged, the light turns green. The sides of the battery are staying cool as well during the charge cycle. Now the downside is there's nothing to really monitor. I've got nothing to monitor the battery to know what's going in and I've got nothing that shows from this Renogy charger what's going into it. So using these um, meters on the outside is really going to give me a good idea to know what the capability is. And by using three different sources I can tell that it is pretty consistent and I don't have to worry about that as a problem. As a general rule I wouldn't run all three of these to monitor but it's showing you at least the consistency that you can get. I want to make sure that it's going to charge correctly and there's no weirdness. And as the battery is cycling through its state of charge it goes from 19 amps down to like 6 amps and continues that process up and down, up and down until the battery reaches the state of charge that it needs to be, which is going to be at 14.2 volts. And I think it's pretty cool to see the panels increase as demand increases. The panel usage goes way up and as the usage goes down or the demand goes down, the amount of solar panels getting used drops as well. There are a couple more advantages of having this set up this way. This allows me to hook up a battery charger, whether it's a trickle charger or something else. It can provide a consistent voltage of more than 13.8 volts to the inside of this thing. And that allows me my lithium battery charging through the device. Another option is in a vehicle while you're traveling, I can take my Anderson power pole connectors and connect them in line with my alternator in the car or truck to give me that 13.8 volts. It's again going to be a lower amperage unless you've got some heavy duty wire going up to your battery. But this too will take that DC to DC charging to charge up your battery. Because this charging setup here to get me 15 amps of power is so fast, I don't have any plans of operating the radio while it's charging. And the noise that I get from charging with a solar panel is both on 20 or 40 meters where I've done most of my testing has been negligible. I want to say that retail this was about $240. I picked it up for about $130. And while this isn't going to be the cheapest option, it gives me the most amount of flexibility. I'm not stuck with an AC charger or something special that I can't adapt into my camping adventures, my camping hobby, or portable operating in a vehicle. Whatever your battery charging capability is, you don't want to exceed that. And for my case, the maximum that this charge controller will do is 30 amps. And I don't have a setup where I can have 30 amps put into it. And I've fused everything for 25 amps. So at very least, I'm protecting my gear to 25 amps. So for the time being, I'll be using the PowerWorks meter to make sure the voltage is going in. I don't have anything going crazy being out of whack because it's so accurate and small and lightweight. Now, if I had a complaint or or a thing that I need to fix with this setup, I would say it would be the Anderson power pole connections. A way to hide those or get them built into the box itself so that they aren't sticking out, they don't present a snag hazard. I need to be able to keep the fuses there and uh, maybe keep everything enclosed within that box. And since I don't have access to a 3D printer, my creative options are kind of limited. Doesn't mean something can't be done. So if you have a suggestion, or an idea that might be able to help me with something like that, let me know in the comments down below. All right, there you have it. There's my Renogy DC to DC charge controller solution for charging up for portable operating when I'm out camping or otherwise. While it isn't the cheapest solution, it affords me the most flexibility to do the things I want to do in the hobby of ham radio. 
Hope this helped you. Make sure you click that like button down below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to get more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. 7-3.